Well, I think we need to ask, what do we expect to happen? Because then we see what we expect to happen happening. Everyone will know we're, we're actually seeing things playing out the way we anticipate, so we're in control. The answer is that when you get more people getting together, you're going to get more disease transmission. So what we fully anticipate will happen is there will be more cases. But let's also not forget the graphs, if we look at the present situation and we compare it with what was happening in European countries like the UK back in January, when we saw similar case loads and we saw similar acceleration of the case load, we were also seeing a big uptick in the number of people going to hospital and the number of people who were unfortunately losing their lives. Those graphs could not look more different now. And that's why we're hearing very bullish sentiment coming from number 10 Downing Street, because the number of people going to hospital is very, very low. The number of people who are passing away from coronavirus remains very, very low. And what we think accounts for that very gross disparity is the vaccine. And so we are comfortable that the vaccines we have on board in a very significant proportion of the UK population now are helping to break the chain, not just of transmission, because they're doing that to a certain extent, but they're certainly breaking the link between catching this infection and becoming severely unwell. Well, a related question then. Do you think it's uh, a wise move to lift restrictions in the UK on the 19th of July? Well, I think you could turn the question around and say, well, if not the 19th of July, when will, when will be a prudent time to lift restrictions? Because historically, people may have answered that question by saying, well, we'll wait until there's zero COVID. But Patrick Vallance, who's our chief scientific officer, has put it very well when he said there is zero chance of zero COVID because scientists and doctors internationally agree that this is an endemic infection. In other words, it's not going away. We're going to have to see coronavirus live alongside us for the foreseeable future, certainly years, decades, possibly longer than that, possibly indefinitely. So with a view to having to live alongside this thing, we then have to ask the question, well, how do we live alongside it, control it, and minimise its impact on our lives? And the vaccines almost certainly are helping to do that because they're translating what would have been casualties into merely cases, and that's where we need to be. Do you think we should start vaccinating children now? Well, it depends. And obviously there are several ways of looking at this. And one camp argues that actually we're dealing with a more infectious variant of the virus at the moment, the Delta variant, and a virus that's more, infection, more infectious dictates that we need to vaccinate a higher proportion of the population to stop it spreading. That's what we call the herd immunity threshold. And given it is more infectious, it's more transmissible, it's causing more cases, that means we need to vaccinate more people, which could include vaccinating younger people. 